Well, howdy. This week's Ask Pastor Mark question comes from Mary. Awesome name. Hey, Pastor Mark. Hey, Mary. She says, a friend of mine recently decided to start wearing a head covering to church based on Paul's instruction to the Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 11. I've read the passage multiple times, prayed about it, must confess. I haven't felt convinced to wear a head covering yet. To be honest, the passage is a little confusing. Let me tell you, sister, you're not alone in that conclusion. What is your take on Paul's message about head coverings? And am I being unsubmissive for not wearing one? Well, by, by way of introduction, 1 Corinthians um, is a letter that Paul writes, and it's probably one of four letters that he wrote. We only have two. As you read it, it'll say, in my former letter, you're like, well, this is 1 Corinthians. Where's, apparently, that's supposed to be 2 Corinthians. Where is 1 Corinthians? We don't have it. And the situation is the Corinthian church is, a, they're a dumpster fire. They're just a disaster. Uh, they are such an absolute mess. You have church members going to be with temple prostitutes. They're getting drunk at communion. They're inviting demons and pagan practices into the church service. One guy's living and sleeping with his mother-in-law and nobody has a problem with that. When they get low on funds, they sue one another. I mean, I'm not making this up. Some people say, oh man, I wish we could be like the first century church. Mm, not this one. This one is a disaster. And, uh, and, and Paul doesn't have anything good to say to or about them. So what they do, they send him a list of questions and then he writes them a series of answers. Part of our problem is we don't have the, the questions, we only have the answers. Paul may have been so upset that two of the four letters that he wrote to them didn't even make the Bible because they weren't inspired. We don't know, they're just gone. And so number one, we have the answers, not their questions. Number two, we don't have the previous books. This might've been an ongoing debate or dialogue. Uh, we might be just jumping into the middle of a debate and also just looking at the answers, not the conclusions. Uh, so the conclusions rather, and not the uh, questions. And so all of that makes it a little more complicated. I preached through all of 1 Corinthians and all of these issues make it a complicated book, as you rightly said. 1 Corinthians 11, the real context is authority. Uh, he says that the head of Christ is God, uh, that our head is Jesus Christ, that in a home, the husband is the head. Uh, what he's really talking about is authority and respect for God-given authority. That would include gender roles, and the whole context in 1 Corinthians 11, he says, you know, man should not cover his head, woman should cover her head, man should have shorter hair, woman should, you know, let her hair grow out if that's what she wants to do, all these things. But what it's really talking about is gender. And, and I'll just tell you, in our culture, this would be a little controversial, um, God thinks that there are gender rules and roles that should be honored. Um, and what's happening in Corinth, much like our own culture, they're not respecting God-given gender roles or even acknowledging that gender is binary and not this massive spectrum. So uh, same conflict as we have in our cultural situation. Uh, in addition, he says, because of this and because of the angels. Well, what is that talking about? I think what he may be referring to is rebellion, dishonoring, disregarding, disrespecting the head authority. It really started in heaven. Uh, that there was God and then there were angels and some of the angels decided, eh, we don't like authority. We want a topple authority. We want new governance. We, we want things to be different. And so they declared war against God's authority as the head in heaven. And they now are known as Satan and the demons. And what he's saying is this dishonor, disregard for authority, this lack of accepting whatever role God made you for, uh, it's nothing new. It started you know, with the war in heaven. And when Satan and demons came down to the earth, they brought that rebellion uh, with them. That's where the Bible says that rebellion is as witchcraft. Uh, witchcraft is how we invite the demonic into our life. Rebellion is another way that we invite the demonic into our life. So whatever's happening here, there's a disregard for gender roles and there is a disregard for God-given authority. Those are the problems and the issues. Paul is writing as an authority to bring clarity to those who do not regard authority. And what I would say in this as well, there is a distinction in the Bible between a principle and a method. Principles are unchanging, methods are changing. As the Christian faith goes from one culture to another, what can happen is that different behaviors carry with them different meanings or values. I'll give you an example. Uh, many years ago, I was in the Middle East and I went to meet you know, someone, I think it might've been a Muslim leader, I don't remember, and I went to shake their hand, put out my right hand, and immediately you know, my translator and tour guide said, oh, don't do that, don't do that. I was like, 
Well, why? In my culture, this is a way of being friendly and welcoming someone and being kind. And he said, no, no, no. In our culture, that's the hand you use after you go to the bathroom. So don't do that. You're going to offend them. I was like, oh, I, I didn't know that. In my culture, this action means something totally different in your culture. I didn't, I didn't know that. And so what happens is as Christianity goes from one culture to another culture to another culture to another culture, the principles are timeless, but the methods are timely. I'll give you something else Paul says in the New Testament. Greet one another with a holy kiss. That's what the Bible says. But if you and I just walk into church and start kissing people, we're gonna have a lot of lawsuits and we're gonna have a lot of grief. I don't know about you, if I walk into church and people start kissing my wife, I'm probably gonna look for another church. That's just what I'm prophesying and predicting in advance. And if they came up and said, oh, but brother Mark, we're just being biblical. I'd say, well, in that culture, it meant something different than it does in our culture. There are still some cultures where when you meet somebody, they give you a kiss or kiss on the cheek and that's their warm cultural way of greeting. So the question is, how do you maintain the biblical principle with, um, with various cultural methods? It seems like in that culture, uh, women that were prostitutes and or behaving in unacceptable ways would take their head covering off. In the, in the same way, in our culture, this would be like you're married, male or female, and you go out to the club or the bar with your friends and you take your wedding ring off. You're, you're, you're communicating something. You're communicating something that is rebellious and nefarious and, and open to sin and temptation. And so what was happening in that culture was in some regard, form or fashion, what they were doing was communicating rebellion against God given biblical principles for behavior. And so uh, for us, the question would be, if somebody sees a woman without a head covering, are they thinking the same things that they thought in that day? No, they're not. But are there certain things that men or women could do to present themselves as Christians that demonstrate a complete rebellion against authority. Like if I wore a big t-shirt that just said F authority, in our culture, that would be the way of sort of, you know, demonstrating that I, I don't believe in authority. If, I, if my whole life is just devoted to anarchy and rebellion, um, you know, I'm just a punk rocker to my core, and the only authority I believe is that I'm my own authority, that would be in principle against what he's articulating there in 1 Corinthians 11. So what I would say to you is, um, you know, what is the principle? The principle is to respect God-given authority. What is the method? It can vary from culture to culture. In some cultures, this principle would still hold true. In some cultures, you know, women wear head coverings, and if you don't, you're saying something that you may not want to be saying, and it all depends on the culture. In other cultures, not wearing a head covering doesn't communicate anything. Nobody thinks anything of it. And so uh, what I would say to you is I appreciate your friends studying the Bible. I appreciate them seeking to be biblical, but I think it is important to go principle method. And again, just like head coverings, I'd say greet one another with a holy kiss. That's just another example. Principle, well, how do we greet one another in a warm, affectionate, and appropriate way? The method in our culture wouldn't be kissing. It would be shaking a hand or giving a high five or maybe the knuckles, whatever that case may be. So we wanna keep the biblical principle and we also want to honor a cultural method. And the truth is sometimes if we keep the method, it actually works against the principle. It works against the principle. And so I hope that's of help. It's complicated. Uh, that is the issue in God's word. And that is the issue in Corinthians. And I would say that less clear text get interpreted in light of more clear text. We call that the principle of perspicuity. This is not the clearest text. And so other scriptures help to give us some context for this text. If you've got a question, send it in to hello at markdriscoll.org. Hopefully it's a little easier than that one and I'll do my best to answer it for you.